So, take two. We had to end the chat so that she would join. So today, welcome to Entrepreneurs Nourishing Africa, based and, and conducted by the Nourishing Africa Hub. Today, we're going to have Princess Adeinka Tekena, who is the founder and CEO of Happy Coffee, join us and tell us all about her experience and her growth and how she built her business from the ground up. And while we wait for her to join, uh, I will just take you through various opportunities and engagements we have on the Hub in the meantime. Uh, I want to start by congratulating one of our very own members for her, well, she will be tonight, be on the AGRS Red Thread session this evening, uh, starting at 5 p 5.30 West African time, 6.30 Central African time. Please do check her out. Uh, the information is on the Instagram live platform. So please feel free to support her. She'll be talking about her entrepreneurial journey, um, some of the challenges that she faced while um, growing and scaling her business in South Africa. So please make sure you do watch SIPA this evening. Uh, but today is all about happy coffee. And we have Princess who's going to join us and talk to us about how she was able to create a coffee business in a region where people usually or it's understood or more likely thought that people don't drink coffee, but Princess has been able to transform this narrative into something that is profitable and something that's great. And she's just joined us. So this afternoon and she's connecting at the moment. Hi. Good. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. Sorry, I have to do it in my car. So. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Perfectly. Thank you for joining. I just want to introduce you to our guest today. Uh, today we have Princess Dinka Tekena, founder and CEO of an um, agribusiness based and get it across the continent and beyond. Um, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Be looking forward to this. Great. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Wonderful. So let's just get into it and ask a few questions. I know a lot of people are wondering how you got into coffee in in a, a country that people often say uh, people don't drink coffee. Um, but can you tell us a bit about yourself and the history behind Happy Coffee? Okay. Thank you for having me. I think it's always uh, a great privilege to talk about our business. So many times when I come out to speak, I like to you know, say that I'm speaking for many other entrepreneurs out there. So for me, thank you for this fantastic opportunity. It's a great platform and for all the work you guys are doing in terms of you know, showcasing African entrepreneurs, especially many of us in the agri sector. So uh, my story always starts from how I read a book. Um, I read a book about Howard Schultz, how he transformed the American coffee culture. But you know, most importantly, I was intrigued by how he was able to take this commodity or this product or this amazing thing, and then he built an amazing company out of it. And most importantly, how he was able to build a team that could build a formidable coffee brand for the future and for, you know, for everywhere. So I think that was what inspired me. And I told myself, if I ever had the opportunity to start a business in the future, then I was a student that it would be coffee. So fast forward to 2015, I'd moved back from, Niger from America. I was in Nigeria. I was trying to decide whether or not to go back to paid employment or I should start off, you know, a journey as an entrepreneur. So um, there was a call for African entrepreneurs to start off, you know, their business. And that was it in the Lumeli Foundation. So I applied um, to start a coffee business and a coffee brand and I got selected. And literally that's how my coffee journey started. Wonderful. Um, and how did you decide that coffee was what you wanted to do? So anybody that knows me, I love coffee. So let's start with that. I obviously love coffee a lot. But if you look at it in terms of, I had done personal research. By the time I moved back to Nigeria, I had done a lot of personal research. And I found out that Nigeria had been growing coffee at a point. As a matter of fact, we were a major exporter of coffee in, in Africa. So my question was, why didn't Nigerians have access to locally grown coffee? What was going on with the coffee that we grew? So those were the questions that, you know, still burn, you know, deeply in my heart. As in, 
part of how we now have a mission, like in Happy Coffee, our goal is to ensure that an average Nigerian does have access to locally grown coffee because you cannot have 16, 16, 15 states in Nigeria. We seem to have some or, connection issues. Hopefully we get... Okay. So, um, so for us, coffee became um, the light in the dark in terms of why Nari Nigerian didn't have access to locally grown coffee. As we speak, 15 states are growing coffee in Nigeria. 95% of what we drink is imported into, into our country. So there's a mixed match in terms of the coffee that is provided to an average Nigeria. And most importantly, we don't have access to fresh brew coffee. So th those are part of the questions we're seeking to answer as a brand and as a company. That's incredible. And I understand that you help smallholder farmers in Nigeria through what you're doing. Can you just give us a, an overview of how that's possible? I remember when I started the business, I, re I didn't even realize that we had started growing coffee back in the country. Um, I think a lot of business, young business owners, when we start, or we start, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this, then you realize, okay, there is a value chain um, that, you know, I began to look at it through the eyes of the value chain. And that was the first thing I had to study as, uh, as a coffee entrepreneur, what was going on within the Nigerian coffee value chain? Where can I be a player how can I create a sustainable brand by supporting that value chain? And the first thing was to decide that we wanted to source locally. At the time I started in 2015, I did, didn't know that there were already farmers who had still been you know, doing a bit of work in that value chain. So what happened was we met a roaster um, in 2015 who had been taking coffee directly from Nigerian coffee farmers. And then I sat with her and I told her this was our vision and dream at the time. And our goal is to continue to support that value chain by taking only locally sourced coffee from her roastery. And that was how we support directly local farmers by only so. Oh, we seem to have lost her for a second. Hopefully she reconnects. I'm sorry about that. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Sorry about that. I think there's a, de a connection delay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, wonderful. Hello. So that was how we began. You know, we started with our roaster. We designed because our roaster is also a farmer. So we designed. Uh, we ex I at that point I you know explained to her what the dream and the vision of Happy Coffee was, and we only want to take coffee that she sources directly from our local farmers, and we created our own coffee blend from that. And since night um, two thousand and sixteen, we've been sourcing coffee locally from farmers in Taraba. Wonderful. That's incredible. Um, and I wanted to ask, you just mentioned how the opportunity came in realizing that farmers um, that were still actually working in, in the value chain that you wanted. What other opportunities did you see when it came to coffee and the idea of coffee, coffee production and retail in Nigeria? Um, at the time we started, I, I didn't really understand um, because I got into a value chain that wasn't, that didn't have a lot of framework. There was a lot of data around it. So we literally started the business, okay, saying, and I think that happens to a lot of coffee, and, um, coffee entrepreneurs, especially in Nigeria, we're not a lot of us. But the first thing I needed to understand was if there was a value chain. But I, like I said, when I got into that value chain, I realized that there wasn't a lot of work that had been done, meaning that um, there was no structure, so to speak. So the first thing we wanted to do was decide, okay, Happy Coffee wanted to stay in the retail side of the agri business in the agribusiness space, and what are the opportunities that are available to us. Uh, so for us, the first thing was to create awareness around Nigerian coffee. I think by the time we got into business, a lot of people didn't know that Nigeria grew coffee at the time. So I remember um, when I got my $5,000 seed capital with the Tunelu Milu Foundation, um, I said I wanted to do research with my funding, you know, I, because I realized that my, my, my business needed a bit of research. So the first thing we wanted to do was to create awareness and educating Nigerians about coffee. And that was how we started the business. And um, that led us to starting our first mobile cafe because we realized that the only way to get Nigerians to drink coffee was to put it in where they were usually used to. And I, because I'm also a student of Starbucks, because one of the things Starbucks did was to create the third space for coffee. 
So I realized that Nigerians already had a third space, and our third space was at parties. So we started our first uh, we started our first business model by going to parties where Nigerians were to give them Nigerian grown coffee, creating coffee blend um, drinks that kind of fit the Nigerian palate, which you know we have. So that was literally how we started the business, and we started going to Oambes, you know, serving coffee, different varieties. And then the brand has grown from that to where it is today. Wow. I really want to ask you more about the, what you have defined as the third space. But we, for some reason, have your, your um, visual is frozen. So I'm not okay. sure things you would have. Do you want me to log in? Do you want me to go out and come back in? Yeah, please. I think that would be great. So let me... Great. So, well, I think she'll, we'll actually be able to get her back in in a second. And while we are discussing that, and we're definitely going to go back into what she described as the third space, um, please ensure that you go through the Nourishing Africa hub and the Instagram live, as well as the, our social media platforms to know what's happening across the continent when it comes to agriculture and food and all the various opportunities that you'll be able to harness. We are currently trying to get... Wonderful. So, Back to what we were saying, you have said something very unique that I would love to touch upon, and that's the third space. Can you share more about this with me? And what I can see you now. I'm having a bit of issues. Okay, let me describe the third space. One of the things that I learned um, during you know, by the Starbucks model. I remember when Howard Schultz was going to start in 1983, he wanted to find a place to bring coffee to an average American. And he found out that people were either drinking coffee at home or at work. But did he, he now, uh, one of his first model was to design a third space, a third space. And the third space is where people can come together and still enjoy coffee outside of the home or at work. And that's the thing about Nigeria. When I was designing our first mobile cafe and library, my thinking was, okay, what is the third space for an average Nigerian? If we designed one, would an average Nigerian come? Or should we just take it to them? You know, the, the popular Nigerian phrase as if you don't go to the mountain, the mountain is going to come to you kind of scenario. So I said, okay, there's a third space already that exists for an average Nigerian. On a Saturday, most times we're out, maybe enjoying with friends and family. And most importantly, we love to go to parties. So um, the party became the Happy Coffee Third Space. And so we designed what we called our mobile cafe and library. And we're able to take that to Nigerians, educate them about coffee and still serve them a great cup of coffee. Oh, that's really incredible. And I like the fact that you, the consumers may not have become but you went to the consumer. And I think that's a big deal that people get that uh, you need to go and find the target market. They will not always just come to you. Thing I wanted to really touch upon was that, as I said, don't consider coffee a, a primary or something that is often consumed in Nigeria. You tried to change the narrative around sensitize uh, people into ensuring. Yeah. Yes, um, it's very important to change the narrative, and I look at it more as we um, we say the not just changing the narrative. I think it's, um, there are lots of assumptions around the Nigerian coffee consumer or the Nigerian coffee drinker. A lot of people say, oh, Nigerians don't drink coffee, which is not true. Because if you look at the numbers in terms of how much coffee we drink in the country, in terms of um, the high numbers, like billions of Naira that Nigerians spend every year drinking either tea or coffee, what has happened over the years is there hasn't been a segment for coffee. So tea and coffee are usually put in the same box. However, if you look at the amount of coffee that is imported into the country, which is about 95% of what we drink, you will realize that there's a thriving and there's a, there is a growing demand for coffee. But because we haven't developed the back end of our coffee um, industry, that ac aspect of the industry has been left out. So over the years, what we have had is people drinking imported coffee, but they're still drinking. So you go to your shelves in the supermarket, you will find coffee there all the time. But what you wouldn't find is Nigerian coffee. Yeah. 
So that's where the issue is. However, there are different opportunities within that coffee value chain. If you see how the West and the rest of the world has taken on coffee, you realize that there is numerous opportunities. Um, it's a job creating sector. It creates wealth. It creates opportunity. It boosts value chain pro projection. So for me, I always look at our business from the eyes of the value chain and how important Happy Coffee can begin to push and um, push the boosting of that value chain within the Nigerian context. So for us, we're writing, and you know, people say, oh yeah, like Starbucks. I mean, I love that. We got an article written about us last December saying that we were the copycat Starbucks of Africa. For me, I'll take that in the same sentence because I'm a student of Starbucks. However, I like to honestly say we're building our own story. This is Happy Coffee. It's a Nigerian story for coffee. We're writing our own narrative in 10 years, we would see a narrative of how Africa or how Nigeria can grow coffee in terms of the business model and begin to, you know, boost production for Africa as a whole. That's great. Before we continue, I want to tell uh, those that are watching that please ask your questions in the question in the comment section or through the question um, application on this slide. We will get through them, get to them through um, our conversations. But the next question I really wanted to ask was, while you've done so, you've actually been able to um, yes, restart start coffee um, and read for the chat when you face that. Um, when we first started, I think the first thing that, you know, the first major challenge was there wasn't any data um, to, you know, usually if you go into a business, you will need data, you will need um, some sort of analysis to say, okay, this is a business we want to go into. Um, so in the beginning, there were no frameworks. Um, a lot of things that I learned, I had to learn on the internet. Um, I'm self-trained. You know, I tell people after God and my family is literally the internet. I believe the internet is one of, if not the most powerful resource tool any business owner especially young people can take advantage of because everything that I know about this business, I learned online from even making coffee because I was my, I trained myself as a coffee barrister and I learned it on the internet. So, um, so that was the first challenge, not having any, and also not having any um, benchmark in Nigeria to follow, follow through on. So I say, okay, I'm, because I'm not in America, so I can't say Starbucks was my benchmark. So look, we had to literally start from the scratch. One of the other issues for a business like mine is because it's not popular, funding can be hard to raise. It's, you know, it's been an ongoing challenge for a business owner like myself in the coffee, you know, in the coffee sector because um, there are no roadmaps. So most investors can't really say, um, okay, uh, let's put our money here. So that's one of some of the challenges I've been facing you know, as a business owner, but notwithstanding, we're still going. You are. And then I wanted to ask, where do you see Happy Coffee in the next five years? Where do you want to be? You know, that question, um, yesterday I got an email, I got an Instagram um, DM of a young lady who was in her final year. Uh, her name is, I can't remember now. Um, she said, she wrote me a very simple message. She was inspired by my story. She wants to be a coffee entrepreneur. She's in her final year in college. Um, she loves coffee passionately. Would I mentor her? And I said, yes. And I said, my dream in five years is to see the growth and emergence of coffee micro-entrepreneurs across board. In Nigeria, uh, we have people calling us for training. We have people calling us to help them set up coffee shops. I want to see, so for the coffee industry, first, I want to see the growth of micro-entrepreneurs. People like me coming up and saying, I want to start my own coffee business. Secondly, I want to see a transformation in the Nigerian coffee value chain and such that there's a national policy that protects coffee interests in Nigeria, we want to be able to get back on the global market with efforts of Happy Coffee. And most importantly, I want the brand to become a household name so that when you think coffee, you think Happy Coffee. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm someone who their day has not started if I have not drank coffee. So I think this is really exciting. And I think before we go on, I want to ask and ensure that everybody knows if you have any questions, please do put them in the chat. We have about 10 minutes to go. So we'd love to get to your questions. I see that it's not necessarily a question, but it's more of a um, comment in which one of our viewers said, not changing the narrative, replica the narrative. Would you like to comment on this? Um, when you say changing the narrative or, or replicating it, um, for us, it's changing the narrative. 
because within the Nigerian context, there is already an existing narrative for coffee, meaning that coffee is just instant coffee. You put it in your cup. No, we want coffee to become a social drink, meaning that when you sit with your friends and family, you should be able to have a cup of coffee. And if you look at the happy coffee uh, product differentiation, our coffee is like 24 hours. So we have the ready to drink line, which is cold. You know, we can serve you hot coffee. We can send you, serve you coffee, with, uh, like a tea bag. So we want coffee to become part of that conversation for Nigeria. It's a new narrative. Yeah, definitely. And what would you say to entrepreneurs who are just starting out, who have decided that this is where they want to do something. They want to start something fresh. What would be your words of advice? For me is, you know, take the internet very seriously. You know, it's a great tool. A lot of us use it for social media engagement. But for me, I take it very seriously. Um, for over five years, I've been part of many programs, um, Nourish Africa, um, Faith Foundation, Tonyo Lumelu, Jack, I just got selected, Jack Ma Top 50. And those opportunities were only available because I was very conversant. I'm very conversant with the internet. I look at it as a tool for progress. So take it seriously. There's a lot of information out there that can help you grow your business. Even funding, you know, a lot of us are still, you know, seeking fund at different levels in our business. Take the internet very seriously. And then get support groups. Be part of a lot of groups, like, you know, be a part of Nourish Africa because a lot of these groups and ecosystems build, give you um, the information and knowledge you need to be able to take your business to the next level so don't undermine being part of a community to grow your business so for me it's been very key oh that's incredible and where can we find your products where can we find you where can we find you on, on social media please tell us all all right thank you so first one instagram happy coffee nigeria um, you find us on instagram as happy coffee on twitter we're happy coffee n and then you can get our products and services. If you go to our Instagram page, the links where you can get our products and services. We also have um, a website, which is ha Happy Coffee Africa, because our goal is to position towards Africa. So it's happycoffeeafrica.com. And um, you can DM us for products. We ship across, you know, nationwide. We have some customers in London and in America. So you can get our products and services there. And we've actually got a question about that. And is your product already into exportation? Um, someone asked if it is, how well is it competing on international markets? To be very serious, to be honest with you, I'm one person that is not keen on exportations at this moment. And the reason is because we're still developing the Nigerian coffee value chain. So it's very important for us to understand our product. We still have a lot of farm issues with farmers. As a matter of fact, I just wrote um, a two-pager to the MD of Sterling Bank today, talking to him if they could champion the cost of coffee in Nigeria and you know, begin to do some work in, a, in, in improving the quality of our coffee. Uh, for so long, the government has been on that back end, but nothing much has been done. So we need a private sector champion, and we're looking for that. So there's still a lot of work to be done. So we're not ready for export for us. We want to stay consistent in growing local consumption and local production. When we, get to the, when we get to the level of exportation, we will. But for now, we're keeping it in the house. And we have someone who says that they hope to see Happy Coffee in Cameroon soon as well. Yeah, we will. We will. We will. I actually wanted to ask, what, how has COVID-19 affected your business? To be honest, to be honest with you, I think it's probably one of the best things that happened to us. Um, you know, it's weird to say that, but I think a lot of times... I look at COVID-19 as a blessing. And the reason was because it allowed us to stop, like, you know, we're all running. It allowed us to stop and rethink our strategy. Up until COVID-19, I didn't realize that our business, at the head of the business, I didn't realize that we didn't have our business online consistently. Um, and so post-COVID, we've been able to transit online to about 45% of our business so that our customers have a wider reach in getting our products. So COVID-19 has been good for us in terms of being able to re-strategize and get our products to more people. So for us, I, I can't complain. That's good. We always say that when it comes to businesses and during COVID-19, you find that those that are really thriving during this time are those that really thought about how to ensure that they could keep the products moving um, and implemented tech and innovation and really leverage social media. And we definitely know that you've done a lot during this. So putting us in this, look forward to over our shelter Thank you. Do go ahead and go on to Happy Coffee Africa's website. Um, if you're looking for them, we'd be happy to link you with them as well by Nourishing Africa if you are unable to find them. Um, and look forward to seeing you soon.
Thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you. Next time. Bye. Bye.